Hi, everybody. Pastor Paul LaFontaine and Literal Life Church in Petersburg, Michigan, would like to invite you to take the next half hour and enjoy some time in the Word of God. If you're hungry for more of Christ, we believe you can be fed, and we pray that you'll be blessed. Visit our website for more information at literallife.church. May God bless you, my friend, and may the music and message encourage you today.
Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Look at the good that comes out of being afflicted, going through things. Uh, That's a pretty strong word, being afflicted. He said, it's good for me to be afflicted because what I learn out of it is your statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than a thousands of gold and silver. Uh, Verse 97 Skip to verse 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Oh, how I love, that's what I'd like to title this tonight, loving his law. Because law, and th- the, the, the talk about the law of God has a bad connotation to it. Right? And Satan's done that. It has a bad connotation. But here's a man of God especially after he had sinned, now he's saying, Lord, I love thy law. I love the law of God. I love the precepts of God. There's not too many people say that, but he's come to a place that I want to come to. Lord, I love thy law. You'd have to understand the power behind God's law in order to say that. I love thy law. You don't have to hear too many people saying it. Uh, you don't You hear too many people that are lawless saying it. I love the law. They want to get rid of policemen and be a lawless nation. And uh, sometimes you'll hear teenagers, you'll never hear them saying, I love the rules of this house. I love the laws of this home. You rarely hear it saying it. And you don't hear people saying it concerning the laws of God. But David's saying it. Lord, I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Verse 113, if you would. 113. I hate vain thoughts but thy law do I love. Verse 163. Verse 163. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. In verse 165. Great peace have they which love thy law. How many want peace tonight? Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall Offend them. Now, this Psalm uh, 119 is uh, set apart and very special uh, in, it, in itself because of it keeps having a theme to it. And the theme is in all uh, 176 verses of it. That's the amazing thing. If you read it, the theme runs through all uh, 176 verses. It's, I believe, I think it's the longest. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the longest Psalm that's in the book of Psalms and it's the 119th Psalm. But what's interesting is about it, it has a theme in every verse, and we're gonna talk about this. Really, the theme is loving his law, loving his precepts. David's saying, I love your commandments. And so you correct me on this as well, if you read it through, I could only find two verses uh, that don't mention these things. Every verse besides two, and I'm, I mean it now, come and correct me if you find me wrong, okay, that's fine. I only found two verses that didn't have these things in every verse. His his law, his word, his precepts, his testimonies, his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes are in every verse but two. So I think we know the theme. And that is he has come to a place that he loves his law, he loves his precepts, he loves his commandments. Everything that's come from God He's in love with them, and he's not running from them. He's not questioning them. He, he's come into the world that this is the only world to live in is God's precepts, God's quotes, God's what do you ever wanna, whatever you want to call them. They're quotes from God, and they come through God's prophets. There's quotes of Moses. That's the quotes of the prophet. And so he's living on all the quotes, and he's valuing all the quotes. He's saying, this all has meaning to me, and I, I'm not running from it. I'm not resisting it. I'm not bucking up against it. I may want to understand some of them more, but there's one thing for sure I have learned. I love your law. 
So all these things are what God spoke to his people through his prophet. All these things are things God spoke to his people through his prophet back at that time. And I don't know if he had, uh, uh, had this strong love for them before he broke the law himself. How many of you raise your hand and say, David broke the law himself? David brought, broke the thing that uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. And he was with uh, another woman that was not his, his wife and not taken as his wife. So he broke that. So I don't know if David come into this deeper love for the law of God after he made a mistake. A lot of times we do. If we're really broken and we're real sincere about our sin, then we develop a deeper love for what we ignored. In other words, he had to trample upon a bunch of precepts. As a king, he had to ignore and say, this doesn't apply to me and it's not important. He had to make it less important in order to commit adultery with Bathsheba. He had to st- uh, trample upon, or uh, he didn't forget because he knew, but he had to say, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm taking a vacation. <laughs> I'm taking a vacation from certain laws of God because I want this woman. Sometimes after we make a mistake and we defy and go against God's law, we pay for it because how many know David paid for it? We can pay, there's something, but there's something good that we get out of it. Can you say amen? And that is maybe what David got was such a, this deep, deep love for the law of God. I don't want to ever, ever resist it again. I don't want to trample upon it. These things are not just words in a book. They're just not words in a tablet, but God gave them to me to protect me. God gave them to me to keep me guarded from the things that I would get into. And now I'm not looking for ways around them. I love them. All I know is that his life was 100% trustworthy of what God said. There's not an ounce of question or resistance in David. He's basically saying, I may not have been all in before, but I'm all in now. I love your precepts. I love your law. So this this life of David that he come into, it would be another extreme of what we see in the world today. This would be the other extreme of what we see in the world because the world is mocking the precepts of God. The world is saying it's out of date. The world is saying it doesn't work. World say, the world says, many in the world say, there, you know, there is no God, number one. But then there, a lot of them are saying, if this is God, this has no value anymore. That's crazy stuff. That's stupid stuff. So this is, if you have that extreme that you live in in the world, that there's no value for the precepts of God. In other words, God says something and they decide whether it's relevant or not and they dump it out. That's the world we live in. I think David is the other extreme of the world we live in, and that is he's not just in between, but he's actually saying, they're saying, I hate God's laws. I don't need God's laws. I don't need to live my life according to God's word. And David's saying, I can't live without the laws of God. I can't function without the precepts of God. The littlest little detail on how to live, I need it to live by. But here, I love the law and guess what? This is David saying this before Calvary. So before the possibility is the Holy Spirit coming in on an individual and living the law by the Spirit. This is before the Spirit is on the soul yet. This is before Calvary. This is, this is way before there's any possibility of, of the laws being written in the heart or in the soul by the Holy Ghost. Before that, David's already saying, I love it, I want to live by it. That's amazing, friends. Because we've got the blessing of Calvary. We've got the blessing of living a Holy Ghost life. The amen are on the inside. That in the soul, when the flesh even says, I don't want it, the soul says, amen, Lord, I want it. I desire thy laws. I want your word. I want what your prophet said. I want it. I want it. It was sent for me. It's not sent for everybody. that's the reality of it. I wish the whole world could receive it, but it's not sent for everybody. I want the love of God in my heart that I know that it's sent for me and I want to embrace it. I want to take all of it. Can you say amen? And so they had nothing to live it by the Spirit, but David loves it anyway. He embraces it. David changes his attitude towards the statues and precepts of God. His mind had changed to love them and not to try to get around them because human nature and the serpent nature is to get around the laws of God. But you see now, God breathes on a generation to give us precepts and principles that are meant for the generation as well. 
That's just the way I believe it. Because the people in Moses' day would have had to believe the same thing. The people in Nathan's day would have had to believe the same thing. The people in Isaiah and Jeremiah, because there were other prophets and some of them would have said, no, you know what, I'm sticking with what he said back there. But yet Jeremiah it was addressing the children of Israel going to idols and different things. So now he had to address what was going on for the day. Can you say amen? And so you couldn't say, well, I'm going to believe this prophet and not this one. No, because God's breathing on a generation saying, I love my people that I may give some precepts for them to be able to understand for their day in their own language. You ought to thank God it's in English for you. A lot of countries don't have that, don't have so much access, but God breathed on this generation. God brought his word to our generation. And it's more up to date. I think I said this Sunday, I preached this Sunday, and I don't have as many here, but I'm going to preach anyway tonight. This word is more up to date than anything I've found. It's more up to date than it ever was. It's more relevant than it ever has been. He gave us his word, and he's put protections in place. And if you start playing with them, then you're going to, have, you're going to open yourself up to spirits in your home, in your mind, in your life. God's put protections in place said Luther Martin Luther said this if you preach the gospel with all of its aspects with the exception of dealing with the issues specifically for your time you are not preaching the gospel at all because the convictions of the gospel the gospel is the good news when you preach redemption when you preach it it's for your age too and when you preach it you're going to be blasting out and warning people of the temptations of the age. But you're not just gonna keep preaching the temptations and keep preaching that this world is all dirty and the spirits are dirty. You're gonna bring around a hope in Calvary and the good news. I've got an atonement for you. I've got an answer for you. It hasn't changed since Calvary. I don't care how bad the modern day gets. His blood is powerful enough to change a life. His blood reaches to the deepest miry clay. His blood has the answer for any depression. His blood has the answer for any mental breakdown. Can you say amen? His power is there for us. He gave it to us. We just have to receive it. Now, Josh McDowell McDowell says some things here, a couple things about the principles of God, and then we'll just bring it to a close. Two teenagers bored on a hot summer night remember that a neighbor has a backyard pool. They also remember that the neighbors are on vacation. They decide to sneak over to enjoy a refreshing swim. They giggle as they clamor over the tall backyard fence, willfully ignoring the posted signs, no trespassing and no swimming. The girl cautiously makes her way across the unlit backyard as her boyfriend races to the diving board with one hard bounce. He hits his body, he throws his body high into the air, The girl's laugh turns to a shriek as she reaches the pool's edge and realizes there is no water in that pool. The impact of the boy's dive snaps his neck, instantly paralyzing him for life. So Josh McDowell makes the comment, the homeowners didn't post the warnings to to take the fun from the boy's life, but to protect those who are around the pool. In choosing to disregard the posted warnings, he moved himself into a dangerous spot. I say it again, in choosing, because it's a choice, everybody, right? When God has his precepts in front of us and the the wisdom of the world, it's a choice. It's a choice. After what I preach Sunday, it's a choice. You gotta choose. And in choosing to disregard posted warnings because as I preach Sunday, some things are not, you have, you've sinned already, but this has the potential to lead you into sin. This is a warning sign. This is something, be careful of this, that could lead in this direction. Can you say amen? They ignored and by choosing to disregard posted warnings, I think the message has a lot of posted warnings for us. In doing that, he, this kid, moved himself into danger. And so he said, like this young man, we often don't see the looming dangers or we minimize the consequences of stepping into sin. How much can it hurt? We ask ourselves. Unfortunately, you and I have a very limited perspective. God, on the other hand, sees every possible scenario. 
and their resulting joys and sorrows. We have a very limited perspective, but God has the greatest perspective. And God sees every possible scenario and their resulting joys and sorrows. Joys, you should say, joys or sorrows. Because the scenarios could be joys or could be sorrows. God sees all that. He sees the scenarios. He says, have you ever entered one of those corn mazes? And they're having those now. I don't know if you've been through a corn maze yet. But at every junction in a corn maze, you're saying, should I turn right? Should I turn left? Perhaps. And you're trying to figure out the corn maze. Okay, you're trying to go through it. And with every wrong turn and dead end, you get more confused about where you are in the maze and the location of the correct path leading to the exit. If you only had a bird's eye view, it would be a lot easier. Can you say amen? If you had a guide, a trustworthy source, perched atop of a real high ladder, you'd have help in making the right choices to successfully navigate the maze. In life, we can consistently make right choices and enjoy much good in life by following God's guidelines and God's boundaries. Can you say amen? He has a much taller ladder. He's looking from a much taller place. And he sees this maze. How many would agree we're in a maze of this world? How many would agree that the young people are in a maze, a corn maze, trying to navigate which direction to go? It's way worse than it was 20 years ago. Way worse than it was 10 years ago. It's a corn maze. How wonderful it would be and how wonderful it is, I can tell you tonight, we've got a God with a bird's eye view. Let's take it further. We got a guy with an, we got a God with an eagle's view. Because God the great eagle is looking from the top and he can see, go this way, go this way, go this way. And this will get you out of this world and bring you to a rapture. I said it'll bring you to a rapture. This word, this word is not just to keep us holy Christians. It's to bring us to a rapture. Do you believe that he's, he's, he's saying, God says it this way, do you believe that I love you and want to bless you with provision and protection? Then commit to my boundaries. They are good. They are for your good because I am good. From God's eternal perspective, God does life with us asking, do you want to avoid heartache in your life? Follow my precepts, don't deviate. You want to avoid addiction? Follow my precepts, don't deviate. You want to be successful in business? Follow my precepts, don't deviate from it. You want to experience true, meaningful love? Follow my precepts and don't deviate from them. You might have to wait for genuine, real love, but don't ever go away from his precepts. But sometimes we get it in our heads that we know better than God. So we make willful choices outside of his boundaries and then must suffer the consequences. So we should spend time reflecting on our life and how choosing to live with God's boundaries has protected you, but also look at the times you willfully stepped beyond his umbrella of protection and had to endure the fallout. Here's the thing about sin. The reper repercussions aren't always immediately evident. Sometimes we think we've gotten away with it, but sin eventually demands our payment unless we each come to understand, and this is important, unless we each come to understand God loves me and I can trust him. We will never walk through life dependent on the character of God to make the right choices. I'm gonna say it again. Unless, you see, this is before, you can talk about dress, you can talk about boundaries, you can talk about rules all you want to, but something has to drop deeper. And this is what David, that's what I said about David. He, he said, I love thy law. David's not saying, I have to do this. He's saying, I love it. He come to a place, I love it. I love your precepts. The more, the more detailed that God's made it for me, the better I embrace it. I love it. I have, I'm not bucking up against it. When I read that quote, of Moses, when I read that quote of the prophet Nathan, when I read that thing, I'm all over it. I'm saying, Lord, you said that for a reason, and I would never dump that out. There's got to be a reason that you said it. I love it because of this. Unless we come to understand that God loves me 
and I can trust him. Don't mess with God's boundaries. Don't mess with God's precepts. If God said it, I believe it, that settles it. I love his law. I love his word. Lord, I want you to know tonight, I may not understand every detail of this word, but I want him to know, I love this word. I trust this word. I have a full confidence in it. And that's what we need in young people. We need a group of people to rise and say, I have 100% confidence in this word and the message of Christ for the last days. And I'm all in. I'm all in. Thank you for watching our message today. If you would like more information, please contact us by visiting our website, literallife.church. And if you would like to come and visit us in person, consider this your personal invitation. We're just 15 minutes north of Toledo at 11,100 Summerfield Road in Petersburg, Michigan. God bless you, my friend, and have a blessed day.